It is Good Friday. And Good Friday is a religious holiday in the Philippines. And Good Friday is associated with many religious traditions. You have the Stations of the Cross, you have fasting, you have abstinence, you have walking pilgrimages. In other parts of the country, people do penitence carrying the cross or scourging themselves. Good Friday has so many religious, human, Filipino traditions. But Good Friday is not about what men and women should do for God. Good Friday is not about doing our obligations for God. Rather, Good Friday is the time to remember what God has done for us. Good Friday is not about what we must do for God. Good Friday is about what God has done for us. And what God has done for us continues to be done right now as we are celebrating the Lord's Passion. So if you are asked, what did God do for us? Most likely, you are going to say, God suffered for us. It is a good answer. God suffered for us. That is why we have the tradition of being devoted to the divine mercy. We have the pious tradition of honoring and venerating the five wounds. But have you ever asked, how many wounds did the Lord have at the moment of His death? It was certainly not only five, not only wounds on the hands and the feet and the side, which count five. The Lord appeared to St. Bridget of Sweden, a mystic, whose preoccupation in life was to know how much the Lord suffered. And the Lord revealed to her and said, You can count my wounds. 5,480. 5,480. And from that counting, we have the tradition of 5,000 475 because we removed the five major wounds. 5,480. Is there skin? Is there still a skin left? Remember, he was scourged. And the scourge was not ropes. It was made of glass and spikes and little iron nails. Remember, he was scourged. And remember, he also fell while carrying the cross. Remember that as he was crucified, he was already ready to die, not only from exhaustion, asphyxiation according to pathologists. He was ready to die because of severe loss of blood. And that is what he endured. 5,480 in one piece of body. From head to toe, there was blood. Was this the first time it ever happened to a human being? No. But the Lord did not only save us because of His sufferings. 
the Lord did not only save us with his five wounds on the hands and the feet and the side, and then 500, 5,475 more lashes all over his body, bleeding, in pain, mixed with dust, mixed with sweat. That is only half of the story. Because the other half of the story is, it was indignity, it was humiliation to the highest form. I will tell you why. Yesterday, he stripped himself of his outer garment. Today, we remember how the Lord was stripped. Totally stripped. Pardon me for being graphic. But our crucifixes do not portray what actually happened more than 2,000 years ago. Because even the genitals were exposed. Nothing. No loincloth. Some people want to expose their bodies. And they make money. And they get attraction. Some people are so private, they will not even show their bodies to doctors. But this man, completely wounded with more than 5,400 wounds, stripped and exposed to the eyes of women, to the eyes of his own mother, and then you ask, what did he do to deserve this? One of the things that strike me is that we have sterilized the crucifixion. We have put flowers around the crucifixion. We have put candles around the crucifixion. We have applied perfume to the crucifixes. That is why we cannot understand anymore what Christ did for us. It was farthest from pleasantry. It was indignity to the highest form. This is not how he died. He had 5,000 more wounds, stripped, the whole body exposed. And not only that, the doctors will tell you, under that extreme suffering, you urinate without control and you move your bowels without control the feces and the urine falling down sliding down from the cross and not only that you heard the gospel say that when he said he was thirsty they took a hyssop and dipped it in vinegar for him to drink? You think it was an act of charity? No! We don't have hyssop. Hyssop is to be found in the public toilets. And if you are rich, you can pay a slave to clean your bowel after defecating. Yung panglinis pagkatapos dumumi ang tao. Hisop ang ginagamit ng mga alipin na binabayaran ng mga mayayaman sapagat ayaw nilang hawakan yung sarili nilang dumi. And that is where they put the vinegar to be put close to his lips and to be drunk. You are complaining about being humiliated? You are complaining about taking, being taken for granted? You are complaining about being insulted? Who among us has been offered a sponge or toilet paper 
when you were asking for a napkin to clean your mouth. Who among us has been raised for everybody to see, totally naked, unable to control your urine and your feces in front of everybody? But that is only half the story. He saved us by His sufferings. He saved us by His humiliation. What made those sufferings and humiliations heroic? Brothers and sisters, it is this. Some people are humiliated and they become deeply bitter. Some people are humiliated and they become angry. Some people are humiliated and they want to take revenge. Some people are humiliated and they carry that for the rest of their life and they blame the whole world. The whole world is against me. Some people suffer and they, and they blame the doctors. Some people suffer and they blame their parents. Some people suffer and they blame everybody. The Lord suffered deepest humiliation and the Lord suffered deepest suffering. And in the depth of that suffering and in the depth of that humiliation, He also showed us one thing that is more deep, the depth of His love. Five thousand more wounds bleeding all over your body. And yet you're able to say, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they're doing. Humiliated in front of your mother and in front of the women. Your body exposed for everybody to laugh at without any feeling of pity for you. And yet you're still concerned that you're leaving your mother behind. Behold your son. Behold your mother. You are already gasping for breath. And you are still able to console a sinner who repents and says, Today you will be with me in paradise. Some people have been humiliated. Some people have suffered. But no one has loved like Jesus yet. And that is what we must always remember. We were saved by His humiliation. We were also saved by His sufferings. We are saved by the love that He put into those sufferings. And we are saved by the deep love that He poured upon the people who have humiliated Him. Did He die for the good ones? Did He die for the apostles? Yes. But He also died for the soldiers who stripped Him and mocked Him and played dice to win over His garments. He died for them. To the soldier who put vinegar on the tip of the hyssop that was used in the toilet, in order to mock him for saying, I thirst, did the Lord die for him? Yes. The challenge of Good Friday is, can you do that? 